Welcome to the Infinite Life Podcast. I'm your host, Katish Haberfield. As a spiritual regression therapist, spirit releasement therapist and medium, I help my clients to break free of karmic behaviours and limiting beliefs impacting their lives. This free podcast takes you behind the scenes in sessions with my clients as they experience regression sessions and celestial healings, as they access the wisdom of their sub and superconscious mind and witness the unfolding story of their soul. I hope this podcast provides you with inspiration and insights that can be applied to your life. Welcome back to the Infinite Life Podcast. My name is Katish Haberfield, and this week we are going to meet another friend who has been on a previous episode in the Star Seeds season of the podcast. So hint, hint, obviously she's going to find an attachment and it's going to be a galactic attachment, and her name is Erica. But the important thing about this episode is I want to bring to your attention the importance of emotions as a form of attachment. Emotions and thoughts that are not dealt with actually stay in the body and they locate themselves in a particular part of the body. They're generally around the chakras. However, they can be anywhere in the body and that's where the emotion stays. And if you don't release that emotion properly or it's been laid upon, then it acts as though it was a physical spirit attachment. And a lot of fear in this world is actually thought forms that are created out of fear and anger. So something so something to think about. So in this session, primarily we're going to be releasing emotion-based attachments from Erica's current life, but we'll also be having an introduction to our galactic friend who was introduced to Erica in the Starseed season. If you'd like to go back to the Starseed season and listen to Erica's episode after you listen to this one, then it is season four, episode two, and it was published on 31st of October, 2022. So that is the episode that logically goes after this one, except for we did the Starseed season first, because I don't know why we just did, and it felt important to get that season out first. There's also an important concept here in terms of family-based spirit attachments as well. So once again, strong urge to remind everybody, if at all possible, and it's not really the case for Erica here, but a lot of people around loved ones when they die, really important to educate them that it's time to complete their life, that there is going to be healing and understanding for them on the other side of the light once they go to the celestial realms, to whatever they want to call it, heaven, afterlife, eternal beingness, whatever it is. Use language that comforts them. And if you can, you can send them an angel of transition to help them. Archangel Azrael is the angel of transition. And you can get plug here for Tina Irwin's The Crossing Over Prayer Book, which has prayers in there to help transition people to the afterlife if they are close to dying or in their their dying moments. And also I have some more information about Earthbound Spirits on my website at katish.com. If you feel that you may have a family member influencing you that has not gone to the light, if they feel like they are talking directly in your mind constantly, that's the clue. They will be influencing your thoughts and actions rather than one who has crossed over, which takes some effort to bring in and you will feel them much more vaguely in terms of just images, smells, sights, sounds, rather than being part of you. So once again, if I can be of any service, please don't forget to head to katish.com and please share this episode with a friend. Let me know what you thought on social media. I'm most active on Facebook. Thank you once again for listening. Namaste. Take care.
Now you can tune into the subconscious realities of your being. A key reality of your being is your spiritual strength, your sovereignty, and your authority over your body, mind, and spirit. Your subconscious mind can remind you of a specific time you felt spiritually strong, like a feeling when you had deep peace or deep faith. A thought realizing the non-dual or ultimately loving and compassionate nature of the universe. A time of connection with implicit confidence in your ability to flow with universal truth. This is a resourceful state you can reconnect with. It could be a directly spiritual moment of realization like a deep peace. Or it could be an indirectly spiritual moment like a surge of unshakable, unselfish resolve to stand up for justice. I will count from three down to zero. And at zero, you'll recall or imagine a moment of spiritual strength, like a deep peace, righteous energy, or authority of clarity. Drift it back with three to a moment of spiritual strength. Two, focusing. One, be ready to step back into that moment and feel the feeling with zero. Now be there. First impression in that moment, are you inside or outside? Inside. Is it morning, afternoon, or evening? Afternoon. And look around and tell me what's happening. What can you see? I'm at work and I've done a lot of this. There's patients around and there's a mom and her son checking out at the checkout counter. They keep slapping each other. The mom is very hateful to the son. The son is hateful to the mom. And what do you remember about your actions in this moment? I didn't do anything, but I realized I was proud of my growth. The way that she parented was the way I was parented and the way I used to. And I realized that I had changed. And sometimes I feel like I'm always stuck. But then I tried to recognize the small growth that I had made. And I was really proud. Oh, great. That's a wonderful feeling. So I want you to choose an image that symbolizes how your uh, spiritual strength of growth and recognizing your spiritual strength growth recognizes that image may be a ball of energy or a physical representation like you might see a flower or something uh, or you might see a color what do you see when you recognize the small growth winds if you're going to give it a symbol or a color like an iridescent white bright light right and if you would feel that iridescent white, where would it be in your body? Where would you feel it in your body? My heart. In my chest. I want you to take that feeling and lock it in now. Really lock it into your heart. Take it with you and bring this feeling of spiritual strength back whenever you need it. And as we go through issues to your spiritual strength, sovereignty, and authority over your body and mind. So know that at any time, if you're feeling like you need to tap into your knowledge of your spiritual growth and you can just feel back into your memory for that moment where you just felt now your spiritual strength. Okay, so what I'm going to actually get you to do now is I'm going to get you to you just felt that white, just take a moment to scan over your body and see if there's any parts of your body that feel uncomfortable or something stuck or lodged in there or there's a feeling of some discomfort. Is there anywhere that you feel this in your body at the moment? My jaw. Your jaw? Okay. And I want you to describe to me what it feels like or what it looks like. Can you actually notice any images, faces or forms or sounds or voices or emotions that is attached to this feeling in your jaw? Anxiety. Anxiety, okay. Yes. And 
if this anxiety could talk, what would it say? That I need to calm down. Okay. And breathe. All right. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is I want to see, does this anxiety have a shape or a color or a texture? No. Nope. Okay, great. And what I'm going to ask you to do now is to, we're going to actually investigate this feeling in your jaw and these feelings of anxiety to see if they're actually your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you up the staircase now to meet your spirit guides. And when we meet them, we'll introduce you to them and then we'll investigate this feeling in your jaw, Okay. So just want you to listen to the singing bowl again. And I want you to imagine in your mind now that you can see a beautiful staircase, a really beautiful one, iridescent colours, lots of beautiful crystals, and I want you to walk up this case. So just let the sound crystal singing bowl guide you up the staircase. And notice how you're feeling. So brighter. As you almost begin to float up the staircase. And as you go higher and higher and higher, you get the distinct feeling that you're being surrounded by angels. And the angels are helping guide you up the staircase. As you go higher and higher. The angels are directing you to a beautiful white cloud. And you can actually just take the angel's hand the top of the staircase to this beautiful white cloud. When you orientate yourself on this cloud, you will notice that there is a beautiful chair to go and sit on. This chair is just not for one. It's big enough for two or three people. Sit in the middle of the chair and then we're going to invite your spirit guides and angels to come and sit beside you. So let me know when you're sitting in the chair. In the chair. Beautiful. Okay, so we're now inviting Erica's spirit guides to be with her today so that she can formally meet you and she can know who you are. So we ask for Erica's spirit guides to come and assist us. Now, Erica, the way that you see your own spirit guides is very unique to you. You may see them represented as a color. You may hear them. You may feel them. So some people can put their hand out, either left or right, and they will have a warm feeling touching their hands. Other people will see the spirit guide. Which way works for you the best? My left hand is warm. Okay, your left hand is warm. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask this spirit guide to make themselves known and let them tell you what their name is. Now, the name may be something that's completely foreign to you, or it may be something very simple. Gabriel? Okay, Gabriel, thank you for being here today. And Gabriel, how long have you been with Erica as her spirit guide? Two years. Two years. Beautiful. And how do you let Erica know when you're present? How can, can she look out for you in the future to know that you are here to communicate with her and to protect her? And how does she go to sense your energy being around? She can feel it radiate through her body. Okay. Beautiful. Now, could you just allow her to feel that energy quite intensely now so that she can lock that in? Yes, I feel it now. Okay, perfect. And 
Gabrielle, are you here to help us today to analyze the jaw? Yes. Okay. And Gabrielle, can you please let me know this anxiety that's in her jaw? Is that from an earthbound spirit? No. No? Okay. What is the source of this anxiety? Trauma. Trauma? Okay. Present life trauma or past life trauma? Present life. Okay, present life. Okay, thank you. So we can go back and fix that. Is that, can you also do a scan for us, please, while we are here to let us know if there are any attached earthbound spirits that need crossing over today? Yes. Yes? Okay. Could you please bring forward the first earthbound spirit so that I can begin to communicate with them, please? Earthbound spirit, my name is Katish, and I'm here to have a chat with you today. I come in peace. I am benevolent, and you can see that you have been hanging out with Erica for a little while. So what is your name, darling? Erica, you'll be able to communicate directly on my behalf. Nothing to be afraid of, darling. I'm here to help you. Just need to know what your name is, darling. You don't need to feel afraid. I know you're feeling a little bit lost at the moment, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, you're feeling lost? Have you been feeling lost for a while? Yes. Yeah. So we're here to make you not feel lost anymore. What happened just before you started feeling lost? There was something in my chest. Okay. Something happened in your chest? And when you were feeling this thing in your chest, how old were you? Were you a small child, a teenager, an adult? Thirties? And are you a, a male or a female? Male thirty-two. Thirty-two. Do you remember your name, darling? You can trust me with your name. I keep wanting to say Jerry or Gary, but I have blockages with those. Okay, that's all right. And what I'm wanting to ask you, darling, so that I can help you, is what year is it for you? 1962. 1962. Okay. And... What were you actually doing when you experienced that chest pain? Basketball. Basketball? Were you in the middle of a game or just doing some practice? Practice. Practice yeah. game. Practice What's game. Real? All right. And so, darling, today it is 2022, not 1962. Did you realize that? No. Okay. So what actually happened, darling, is that when you were playing the basketball, you actually had something happen to your heart and you died. Okay? So what happened is you got a bit of a shock from that, didn't you? Yes. You didn't expect to die, did you? No. No. Okay. So it can be a bit of a shock. And... When you were in that shocked state, did you see the angels or the rainbow bridge to come and help you take you to heaven? No. No. Okay. How did you find Erica? How did you know she was safe to be around? Walking outside of a hospital. 
Okay. Happy. She was happy? Yes. Okay. And so you just came to be with her because she was happy and she made you feel safe? Inviting. Okay. And have you been helping Erica while you've been together? No. No, you've just been hanging out, yeah? Keeping to yourself? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. And did you have a family, darling? Yes. Were you, mar were you married? No. Okay. Did you have a girlfriend or a partner? Yes. Yeah, okay. And uh, they'll be missing you, won't they? Yes. And uh, one of the things that happens, darling, when we don't go with the angels to heaven is that our family members can't finish grieving until we cross over and receive healing. So what I wanted to do today, darling, for you was to bring in my beautiful team of angels and help you go to heaven so that you can receive healing and understand what happened to you and why it happened to you so that then you can feel free, uh, be reunited with your family members and not feel lost anymore. How does that sound? Good. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do, darling, is I'm going to send in a really bright white light as though somebody's flashing a torch at you in the middle of the night. Can you see that? Yes. He's so scared. Okay, darling. You don't need to be scared. This is going to be a really beautiful experience for you. And what happens is that you're going to lose all feelings of being afraid or being scared now, okay? This white light is going to come and wash over you. It's going to make you feel really peaceful and calm. And you're basically just going to feel very relaxed. And the angels are going to come and help you drift into that white light. Can you feel like you're starting to feel light? Yes. Okay. So imagine that you were like Peter Pan and you could just float up into that white light. Can you allow yourself to start to float? Can you imagine that you could possibly float? Yes. Okay. So float on up and as you begin to float into that white light, there will be an angel there that you can grab her hand and she's going to take care of you, very special care of you, okay? So you reach out and grab her hand and let me know when you've grabbed her hand. Okay. Okay. All right, darlings. The angel is now going to look after you and take you to heaven. So we wish you Godspeed. We love you and we will hear from your journey and to make sure that you're safe through Archangel Gabriel, okay? So off you go on your way and you're going to be looked after, my dear. Take care. Goodbye. Gabrielle, could you please confirm once he has crossed over? He has crossed over. Okay, beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay. And Gabrielle, would you mind confirming, please, if there are any other earthbound spirits who need crossing over today? No. No other earthbound spirits? Okay. It, it devices implanted? Sorry, what? Is there any foreign objects? Could you ask Gabrielle if there are any foreign objects in your body that need to be removed? Yes. Yes, okay. And could you let us know exactly where that is? What part of it? Yes. Leg or right leg? Right leg? Okay, so Erica, I want you to just focus your attention on your right leg. Can you feel something in your leg? 
yeah, the back of it's burning or itching or some tingling or something. Okay, radio. All right. Now I'm going to ask the being or entity who was responsible for this device to please step forward and let us know who you are and what the purpose of this device is. You can look into my eyes and see the authority that I have to act on this manner. And I would please to have a casual conversation with you. So if you could step forward, please, and speak to Erica so Erica can be our translator for today. Erica, has it been stepped forward? Playing the device? Michael. Okay. And Michael, are you responsible for this device? Yes. Yes, okay. And I'm wondering, what is the colour of the light from your home location? Yellow? Okay. And why have you put a device on this human? To watch her. Okay. And why? What's your relationship with this human? Contract? Okay. And... When did you agree to this contract? A long time ago or in this current lifetime? A long time ago. And did you agree to this contract with Erica when she was in the same location as you in the galaxy? Yes. But she's had a lifetime where you are from? Yes. So this monitoring agreement was because it was a protective device? Is that what you're saying? Yes. A form of communication? Yes. And the galaxy that you're from and the planet that you're from, is it speakable in our current human language? No. That's all right. Thank you. So... What I'm here to ask you to speak to your superiors about is to let them know that this device is no longer working and it also actually is no longer collecting the correct data because this has been compromised and the contract, even though you did have this with Erica, actually is against the universal laws of sovereignty and particularly the laws of sovereignty here on earth. So because Erica is now becoming more and more in tune with her spiritual nature, she no longer needs this device that upon her and requests this is carefully and skillfully removed because I'm here to give you the news today that you are able to communicate with her through other means now, not via the device. Do you understand my instructions today? Yes. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to go consult with your superiors and to update your records to the record that the client no longer agrees to this device. Now, just as they invited it, they now disinvite it. And I would like you to update your records and then come back to me with agreement from your team to remove this device carefully and skillfully. Okay. Thank you. Let me know when that's complete. Let me know when it's complete that you have the agreement and then we will go about the removal process. Agreement. 
Okay, great. Thank you. Now, I would like you to ensure that your team skillfully and carefully removes this. So there's absolutely no trace that there was ever a device there. And I would like you to also please heal the location so that there is no itching or burning so that it was though it was never there. Do you agree to do this? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll give you some time to please carefully and skillfully remove and heal this area of the leg and then let me know when that is complete. Okay. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate that. What I would like to do is to inform you that because Erica is part of the program today, she is opening up all of her spiritual senses. And given that she originated or she had a lifetime with you, I'd like to invite you to give her a light language activation or some kind of activation whereby if she chooses, she's able to receive messages from you that are in her best and highest interests and continue on her spiritual knowledge and activate any healing or wisdom that she gained while she was on your lifetime. Is there something that's appropriate for her today? Yes. What's that? Yes. Is it light language activation? Light language. Okay. All right. I'll just give you a minute. And if you could do that light language activation, please. And let me know when you've complete. It is complete. Thank you. Appreciate that. So now, could you please let Erica know how to sense that you are going to communicate with her via light language? Will it be physically? What sense mechanism that humans have will you know that she's aware that you're trying to communicate with her? Visual. Visual? Okay. Yes. Well, she's light behind her eyes or is there some kind of a visual symbol what will it be yellow aura yellow aura okay okay great thank you very much now i thank you for your cooperation today and i'd like to pull on the rescue spirits of light to guide you back and anyone else that was with you to the location of yellow where is your home we request that all technicians, workers, and commanders formally complete and end this mission. We thank you for your participation and your understanding, and we look forward to hearing how Erica communicates with you in the future. Thank you, and Okay, Archangel Gabriel, could you please confirm that they have now vacated? They have. Okay. Could you please continue the scan and identify if there is any other being, be it a DFE or a earthbound spirit or any other attachment left today for us to cross over? Archangel Michael is making himself appear okay. and known very strongly, and I'm supposed to say that. To say what strongly, sorry? Archangel Michael is making himself appear like very known. Known, yes. Okay. Hi, Michael. Michael, do you have, did you wish to speak to me? 
Yes. You like to tell me? Body scan? Okay, thank you, Michael. Okay, so Erica, we need to do a body scan, please. And I want you to start at the tip of your head. And I want you to identify any strange sensations, colors, shapes, or forms that may be lodged in your body. My right temple is burning, and I keep seeing a red hexagon. Okay. Okay. Okay, Michael, does this red hexagon represent? A DFE or another implant? Okay, thank you, Archangel Michael. Okay, thank you for noticing that. Hi, I'm going to address now the entity that is represented via the red hexagon. My name is Katish, and you are currently residing in the body of Erica. So it's my job here today to open, establish communication with you and to hear your story. So I would like you to step forward, please, and look into my eyes and see my authority. Know that you are safe. And I'd like to know how long you've been with Erica. We come in peace. There's no need for you to remain hidden anymore. You are important to us. We wish to hear your story. Twenty six years. Been with her twenty six years? Okay. And how did you meet Erica? I see a kid, a little girl. Is that an image of you or of this person that is residing with you? I feel like it's me. And can you see what you're doing? Skipping in the woods. And how did you attract this being? How did they know you were friendly? I saw them. You saw them physically with your own eyes? Okay. And so that means you have some clairvoyance. Have you shut down that, that ability at the moment? No? Okay. And how did they appear to you, darling? I could see almost the entire person. Okay. And can you access that memory now and tell me what they look like? I know who it is. Who is it, darling? It's my grandfather. Your grandfather? Okay. We used to play in those woods. And what's your grandfather's first name? Okay. And what happened to Oren? Do you know? Do you remember? How did he die? He had an arterial gram done and the hospital put the wrong medicine in him. Oh dear, okay. It stopped his heart. Okay. So that would have been quite the shock. Yes. Do you remember what year it was that he died? Not exactly. Okay. All right, Oren. My name is Kim. I would, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind talking to you today, Oren. Oren, what year is it for you? 1995. 1995. Okay. And Oren, 
You received quite a shock when you were in the hospital, didn't you? Yes. Do you realize that today is 2022, Oren? No. Okay. It is. So you've been with Erin for quite some time, haven't you? Good yes. Time. Some time? Yep. Okay. Did you realize that you missed the angels and the light to cross over and go to heaven? Yes. Was that because of the shock that you received or because you just didn't want to go? Didn't want to go. Why was it that you didn't want to go, darling? Didn't know what to expect. Okay. And were you by yourself for a while before you found Erica in the woods skipping or was that pretty soon after you died? Pretty soon after. Okay. And have you been looking after Erica while you've been with her or have you just been laying low? Looking after. Okay. And how have you been doing that? Keeping her safe. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if you are aware of this, but I'm going to help you today because when we don't cross over and go to heaven and and receive healing and understand what our life was all about, the loved ones that we have, all of our family members that are left behind when we die, they can't finish their grieving process, okay? And their grief actually gets stuck in their body and can cause illness, and uh, stuck emotion. So I'm sure you don't want Erica to have detrimental effects of your being around, do you? No. Okay. So it would be in Erica's best and highest interest for you to give healing and go to heaven today. To do that, you have to be comfortable and I will help you guide through the process. As you can see, Erica is a fully grown woman now, isn't she? Yes. And uh, you can see that she has loving, supportive friends around her and family members to guide her on her path? Yes. Okay. And you understand that when you go to heaven, you can actually still be there for Erica, but just on the other side of the veil. Did you know that? No. Yeah, you can actually be like a guide for her, a spirit guide for her, where you can look over and advise and help her and protect her, but from the angelic side. Does that appeal to you? Sounds good. Sounds good? Okay, darling. So what we're going to do is, would you prefer to see a bright white light or an angel today? An angel. An angel. Okay, so I'm going to send a team of angels now. And all you need to do is to look up into the sky and look for the angel. And the angel, simply, all you have to do, she's very light and soft and fluffy, is hold your hand out and she's going to escort you, make you feel really light so you could fly. She's going to take you up to heaven where you're going to receive a healing And you're going to be reunited with your family members on the other side. Can you see that angel now? Yes, I can. Okay, so I want you to reach out your hand to her and start to begin to float and drift away. The drifting and floating, feeling lighter and lighter, brighter and brighter as the angel takes you higher. And higher and higher, all the way up to the heavenly realms. Godspeed, God bless, and we look forward to hearing from you once you've received your healing and you can communicate from your celestial self. Archangel Michael or Gabriel, could you please let me know when Erica's grandfather has crossed. He has crossed. 
Okay, great. Thank you. And Archangel Michael, do we need to continue the body scan? No. No. Okay. Archangel Michael, is there any further communication you would like to have with Erica today? No? Okay. Do we have permission to leave and return Erica back to her normal daily life? Yes. Okay.